Cantonese food is still very much around and there are new spots popping up and they are busy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is deeply freshly fried. It's good, it's good. Pretty good. Is it delicious on a scale of one to 10? Mm, 10. Ah! This episode of Chinatown Cheap Eats 16 is a little different than the rest. All of these spots are new and open within the past year. Now, are they still cheap? Are they still good? Can they compete with the OG spots? Maybe they offer something different. Hit that like button and find out. All right, you guys, leading off this episode of Chinatown Cheap Eats, we are in front of Hakka Cuisine. Now, I'm telling you, this might very well be one of the best new Southern Chinese restaurants in all of America. Guys, the chef is Hakka. They are serving up some of the best Hakka dishes. I know a lot of people out there probably haven't had a lot of Hakka food, or maybe you haven't even heard of Hakka people, but if you have it, hopefully you're gonna learn about the food and culture right now. It is delicious, it is affordable, and it's brand new, and it's right in the heart of Chinatown. All right, everybody, starting off round one here at Hakka Cuisine, we have some very uniquely Hakka dishes here. And I know that real quick, the restaurant looks very fancy, but I think you can get some really good lunch special deals right here. You can eat for lunch for $11. This is a lunch portion right here. That's the cheap Chinatown cheap eats part. We got our first dish here, which is actually the stuffed tofu Hakka style. Lydia is off the camera. She's going to say the name in Cantonese, Mandarin, and Hakka. Hakka yang tofu. Oh, yo, the Hakka sounds different, man. All right, you guys, this is the Hakka stuffed tofu. Like we said, this dish, I never ate this growing up, Andrew, because we are not Hakka. A lot of times, I actually am not that big of a fan of meat stuffed tofu, but I'm telling you, it absolutely works in the Hakka stuffed tofu, man. I'm moving on to the Moon Choi Kao Yolk. This is uh, actually braised pork belly. And if you know guys about Hakka cuisine, they're very nomadic people, Andrew. They braise and they stew a lot of stuff and they use a lot of preserved veggies and a lot of salty things. Mm, I would say that this is a Cantonese classic, but I guess, man, maybe Hakka people started it. Yeah, no. A lot of things that we eat as Cantonese people, Andrew, we don't even know the original origin, you know, they could be chiu jiao or they could be hakka, just like the muchoi kao yo. This is uh, the yim sir kai, which is uh, a salt water chicken. <clears throat> Honestly, it does remind you, obviously, and over the years it's been blended a lot with Cantonese food, but I'm telling you, hakka food has its own unique flavor profile. Moving on. All right, Lydia, we got the fried eggplant, but how do you say it in Cantonese, Mandarin, and hakka? Oh man. And guys, as an appetizer, this is only $9.95. That's a super good deal. Yo, I've never actually had Ziu Yim Kezi before. This is my very first time having salt and pepper fried eggplant like it was squid. Oh. You know what one of my favorite dim sum dishes is of all time though? It's the fried eggplant with the uh, the shrimp paste inside. So I, I don't know if the fried eggplant influence came from Hakka people. I'm ready to put my house in a circle. Sesame chicken. See, I'm not even good at identifying American Chinese dishes. Obviously, you've got the mapo tofu too. Mm-hmm. That sesame chicken is delicious. But I would say this mapo tofu, based on what I know about Hakka food, how they use so much preserved vegetables, I would say the mapo definitely has more preserved veggies in this, so maybe it's got the little Hakka twist on it. And just a reminder for $10.95 for a lunch special, you can get the Muchoi Kao Yuk, you can get rice and a soup all together for like 11 bucks. That's a Chinatown cheap eat. Dude, this is pork, sweet and sour pork balls on ice with fruit. This is like something I never imagined I would eat before. Yo, this might be the root dish, Andrew, of sweet and sour pork at all the takeout spots. Oh my gosh. And uh, Hakka people, they do like mm. fruity meats. Like, because in uh, Taiwan, Andrew, one time we went to a Hakka restaurant that was all like, fruit and meats together. Oh my God. I totally forgot about that. 10 years ago, we ate a bunch of meat and fruit. That was crazy in Taiwan. Yeah, because there's a lot of Hakka people in Taiwan. Hakka people are one of those groups of people from like Guangdong that really went everywhere. Their diaspora is crazy. They went to Jamaica, they went to South America. Went to India. They went to India, right? Hakka Chinese food is really trendy right now. Man, moving on, Andrew. Um, to the fried pork belly. Uh, Lydia, what is this called? Oh, 
All right. Tattoo line. Um, Andrew, I believe the Taiwanese hakas would make this version a little bit more red. So there is even variation. Like we said, Hakka Cuisine in Chinatown, Andrew, more of a Canto Hakka vibe. Mm. Deep fried pork belly. Haven't had this one before. Bro, I'm getting on like some sweet <clears throat> apple fritter vibes. Guys, I do like the uh, red yeast versions that are hooking mixed with Hakka, but being Canto, I gotta say, I might prefer the Canto Hakka versions. Oh man. That is real good. All right, you guys, we've got the minced beef with a fried my fun cake. Uh, salted egg yolk pumpkin slice bits have been fried. I would say, Andrew, every time I've been to Hakka Cuisine, I gotta get this. I don't care where I am, I'm getting this on the menu. All right, you eat that, and in the spirit of New York City, I'm gonna take these slices. Oh. That's a crispy pie. I'm telling you, you have no idea how many egg yolks you have to make to take make pumpkin taste that eggy. Ooh. Like, how many you have to break down into it is crazy. A scale of one to five, how eggy is that? Five. Yo, man, I think this dish is really interesting because I've had minced beef soup before, but being able to put it on kind of a crispy noodle uh, slice is actually totally different. It changes the texture. I love grilled noodles. I love how it's a little bit burnt too. This is a really cool dish. I, I recommend you try this out. So you saying uh, this is a different type of Hakka mm. New York slice? This ain't a traditional New York slice. We know a little Italy, but uh, yeah, let's take a look. It's not a cheese stretch, it's a noodle stretch. Good. Hey, it's a grilled noodles more. Here we have an award-winning dish from their chef. Roasted chicken skin with taro shrimp paste in the middle. So they replaced the chicken meat, bro. Guys, listen, from here you can't tell. You think it's gonna be chicken meat. You lift it up and there's just shrimp and taro. So let's go for it, guys. Bafakai. Mmm. Never in my life. That's good. And our last dish is gonna be the sticky rice stuffed chicken wings. Lydia, in Chinese though, what do we call this? Lo mai leung kai yik. Lo mai leung kai yik. Oh they, 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 they did not nodded their heads, I got it. You know what's really interesting is that uh, most people probably associate stuffed chicken wings with something from Thailand or Laos, but mm. here we are getting it at a Hakka cuisine. Who knows, what if, what if that all came from the same root influence? <laughs> wow. That is like a mini Chinese American Thanksgiving turkey dinner. Because mm. oftentimes they'll stuff the turkey in a Chinese American family with lao mai kai, and this was like a lao mai kai stuffed wing. Mm. Delicious. This is like a mini ABC Thanksgiving in one bite. Banger! All right, everybody, and then we gotta end off with some Cantonese classics, but done in their own Hakko cuisine style. Uh, what do we have here? Hoi xin chow mein. This is a seafood chow mein, and of course, you guys know this is the crispy style, roasted on the bottom, and then we have fried rice here. Ooh, this is the golden fried rice. Now, what makes it unique? Is it these like golden pieces of egg? Ooh, going in for a bite. Mmm. No. Just, just take a look at the spoonful, guys. When you got that many layers and little details in it, that's when you know the fried Listen, rice guys, is fire. I like omakase as much as the next person, but take some of your omakase money and come on down to Hakka Cuisine. Whoa. Guys, shout out to Hakka Cuisine. I mean, they are serving up some exclusively, uniquely Hakka dishes, but along with that, they're, they're pumping up the classics, guys, and honestly, it's super affordable. The lunch menu looks great. I'm gonna come here for lunch, only $11. You can't beat it. Chinatown Cheap Eats, shout out to Hakko Cuisine. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is Guy Kitchen in the Mott Street Eatery. It's a new stall. They are bringing authentic Thai-style Khao Moon Guy, you know, Hainan chicken rice or chicken rice, whatever you want to call it. They're bringing the authentic version to Mott Street Eatery, to Chinatown. They got fried uh, Thai eggs, that's very popular. And then they have different types of wings and stuff. So it's all really cheap, guys. Nine bucks can get you a large. Let's check it out. Guys, here we have the authentic Thai steamed chicken rice. Now, obviously a lot of different countries from Vietnam to Singapore to China, they all do their own version, but everybody does a little bit differently. Obviously the steamed one, the classic is called Khao Moon Gai. The roasted one is called Gai Op. 
and then the chicken wings are called gaitan and then they have the deep fried eggs right here i'm going to show you oh my gosh that is deeply freshly fried mm. at nine bucks for a large protein and carb this has got to be one of the best deals in chinatown right now i'm afraid i don't know if they'll have to raise their prices eventually that's pretty juicy and the rice is even a little sticky I know a lot of people have had the steam version, but this is the roasted Thai chicken, the guy op. And uh, I know that this is very, very popular in Malaysia. Um, man, I just like the brown skin. It's roasted nicely. This is a nice piece of dark meat right here. The sauce is a little bit different. It's not the ginger sauce. It's a little bit more of the pungent um, fish sauce dip. Here we have the wings, $10 for five of them. I got them with a little bit of spice on it. These are called Gai Tad. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably my favorite stall here at Mott Street Eatery. Mm. Ending off, I got the drinks. Uh, usually they have mango sticky rice as a dessert, but they ran out today. I'm gonna try the chicken broth real quick. I have a pink drink and I have a fresh Thai iced tea. Dude, honestly, guy chicken is the perfect lunch food. When you're talking about chicken, you have your protein, you have your rice. Um, it's fairly light, fairly healthy, and fairly cheap, guys. It's really hard to beat, and I just love to see these concepts come more into Chinatown. I know that there's other spots in Chinatown that serve chicken rice, but as a spot that just specializes in it, I like to see it. Guys, I mean, the truth is, I think a lot of Chinatowns are turning a little bit more Pan-Asian, but it doesn't mean that even the people are not Chinese, to be honest, because there is so many Thai Chinese people, and I believe the people back here, even though they're from Bangkok, they're probably, you know, have a lot of Chinese lineage. So I think it's just really cool to be opening up new concepts in Chinatown that are very cheap. And at the end of the day, it is all part of the Chinese diaspora, in a way. Dude, this is the most busy stall here, I'm telling you. Come to Guy Kitchen. here on Jefferson Street. We're here with Kenny and his uncle who are, who are running this spot. Yo, Kenny, uh, what, what do you guys, how would you describe the food at E Noodle? Because it's a little bit different than other Kanto spots. General, generalizing, you know, Hong Kong cuisine is what we specialize in. Uh, du uh, soup dumplings, dumplings. Um, this is just not just a business, it's culture, you know, it's a family business all, and you know, just trying to make a good home cooked style food generally, generally for the community in this area, yeah. yeah. Trying to make like kind of this high-end expensive seafood accessible to more people. More people. Cause Especially more abalone, because we all know That's abalone true. is like, uh, yeah. little abalone I'm, can cost I'm a lot. I'm not waiting three days for the Buddha jumps over the wall dish. Yeah. I'm not yeah. waiting three days for it. And the sea cucumber also. All right. Sea cool. cucumber, you need three days and uh, also the, the, the fish mall. So now we try yeah. to make this a more right. popular dish that you can order you know right now. So I like the concept. I like it. You make it something that was premium, more accessible. All right, here we have some of E Noodle's signature dishes. What are we looking at? A hot pot rice, a tiny sausage. Uh -huh. Right, this is called bo dai fan, right? Bo dai fan. And you said la specifically la mei bo dai fan. Mm -hmm. My Addition. personal favorite. What is this? Fei ma chao fan. Yep, Fe, uh, it's a fat ma rice roll. In Chinese, it would be fei ma chao chang fan. And then this is, of course, a of classical course, wonton noodle, right? Wonton noodle soup. I mean, it is called e noodle, so I'm sure the noodles gotta be good. Yes, yes. It has to be. In Hong Kong, there was a lot of Shanghainese food because a lot of people from Shanghai went to Hong Kong too, so. Oh, that's a good one. This one looks super high quality. This looks a lot like a Din Tai Fung Xiao Long Bao <laughs> like versus like a Zhou Xiao Long Bao. It's good. It's good. All right, so starting off with the Bo Tai Fan, it has like three or four different types of preserved meats. I'm gonna put on the sweet soy sauce. This is only $14 for a Bo Tai Fan. Look at how big this is. Mmm. I might get this little piece no, of ham in there too. came with the dark soy sauce. Wow. All right, next up we've got the Ao Lam right here. Of course, this tendon piece is the Ao Gun. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really important, man, because if you get a bad piece of Ao Lam, you're gonna be chewing on it for like two weeks. That's good. 
show this for attention. Oh my goodness, tennis. Andrew, that is a big piece of gun. Ooh. Oh, gun. Uh, low key, a lot of people don't know this radish, this small pop, this adds a lot. Like, it's kind of a sleeper root, you know, because a lot of people would not put this root very high on the hierarchy. Right. But it's up there. Because a lot of people think it doesn't have that much flavor, but think of like lobaco, which is that dim sum dish. It's made out of the same thing. Radish cake. Mmm. One of my favorite dishes here is the Fei Ma Cheng Fun. This is not just any other Cheng Fun. It's like fatty beef stir fried in with uh, rice rolls. Yo, this is almost like the chopped cheese of rice rolls. What you guys do that's different because a lot of people don't have this dish, right? They don't have that. As you can see, the rice rolls are kind of fried on one side right there. It's a little crispy. Mm. Mm. What I love about this one ton is like the ends of the skin is ve still very silky. And then the inside is going to be still a little bit firm though. It all holds together. Mmm. This one ton mean is comfort food right here. We got E-Noodle Uncle here, all right. You don't can, even know what we're about to look. Can, can, <laughs> tell, tell us what we're looking at. Woo! Oh! That is a very traditional Chinese uh, food. That is a uh, avalon, that's sea cucumber, the dry wow. sea cucumber, and the fish maw. Wow! So and then the fish maw. Yeah, this the is probably one. something that mostly only Chinese people will order, right? Yeah. Specifically <laughs> Cantonese people, maybe. But, all right. But now I try to make it more popular. Hey, E-Noodle, right here. Wow. I'm going in on the bao yu. That's the cheapest ceremonial banquet dish you can get that's still good. All right, last but not least, Kenny, we have another one of your guys' signature dishes. What do you call it? Three meats with pearl noodles. In Chinese, it would be samsi and zhen fan. Yeah, and what I like about this, these pin noodles is very unique. Um, I think they're also called, what, they're called pearl and pin noodles? Yes, I've correct. Pearl and pin noodles. Dude, stir fried, it's delicious. Mmm. I know dad is a fan of cooking the unzun fun. I remember every Sunday morning. <laughs> well, I like this because it has some bell peppers in there and it has a lot of green onions and there's this kind of a freshness that also comes along with it. So definitely guys, look at the color of this dish. You gotta try it. Overall, I love E Noodle's new Jefferson location, man. It is the definition of a Chinatown cheap eat. Uh, every dish here ranges from like 10 to $16, minus the seafood one, of course. But honestly, everything is super affordable. It's great for sharing, lots of good flavor, and you will have some dishes that uh, you probably haven't seen at other stores. No, spots you know what I love about it is bringing the accessibility to dishes that you would really need to be at like a higher end spot down to, you know, making it accessible for everybody and affordable for it. It doesn't matter who you are. Oh, Thank you. Our, our next spot on Cheap Chinatown Eats is the brand new Bao Tea House. This is their second location in the city. It is something the neighborhood has never seen. And yes, they designed this place to almost maybe feel like Japan. All right, what's cool is they have a whole lot of unique baos and they actually warm them up for you, okay? You have everything from the savory, to the sweet, the guava baos, the rice baos, and then also upstairs, they have a whole area where you and your friends can go sit down on the short stools, hang out and just, it looks cool. All right, we're about to try all the bows here at Bow Tea House. Uh, they're about four twenty-five each. If you get two, you can save a little bit of money there. Um, man, this really just feels like a Kino Kuniya, you know, which is like a Japanese bookstore or like you know a Momofuku. Uh, this is the chocolate bow. Wow, matcha bow. Ooh. Oh, that's the veggie one. Actually, it looked like matcha on the outside. Ooh, beautiful bows. All right, this is the Valentine's one. Rose custard in the middle. Oh my gosh. Oh, rose flavor to the max. You know, when it comes to formats that are universal to people, it's kind of like the dumpling, the sandwich, the bao. These are just things that people just like to eat. So it's really cool that Bao Tea House was able to do so well with their first location that they've really expanded. All right. Oh, I'll, that was the egg one. I was looking for this one. I'm so sorry. Whoa. Let's see what this one is. Ooh, that's the chicken bao. Ooh, spicy. 
These meat ones are really cool because they remind me of empanadas, except they're a lot softer and they have that little sugar topping. This is an egg custard bao. All right, finishing off, for two onigiris, you can get it for $8, and then for two pork belly bows that are freshly made, they're about $8.50. Let me test these out. Mmm, these are small, but they taste really good. All right, here we got the chicken curry onigiri. Ooh, very soft. Oh my gosh, it's almost falling apart. What's cool about Bao Tea House is that you can just get a snack and only spend maybe four, five, eight dollars, or you can go all out, get a drink, a couple snacks, share it amongst friends, and then just have a good time. Of course, Starry Night with the pea flower. Refreshing and fun. Hey, it is Instagram worthy. Next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats, this is not the cheapest though, um, but we are here at Michael Matcha, which is connected to the new Kira Ramen, which is on Bowery. Okay. So, it, and it looks really cool in that Kira Ramen, guys. The, the seating, it like stacks on top of each other in these hexagonal shapes. Anyways, we're talking about matcha. So this matcha with the gold flake was $14 after tax. You can get it with a swirl, so it's half hojicha, half matcha. But anyways, it's premium, okay? Mm. This is part of the wave of Japanese companies uh, getting bought out or for whatever reason being franchised and now opening up in Manhattan. This is actually, really good it's pure matcha very soft and it's really interesting on this corner of Bowery it's kind of becoming this little mini miniature like Japanese concept town but basically a lot of these Japanese concepts whether it's Prince Tea House which is based off of like Japanese French or British tea houses and then Kira Ramen um, which I believe it started from the uh, Taiwan but is a Japanese restaurant and then you have this yakitori spot that's owned by Chinese over here so it's like all Chinese owned Japanese concepts here on Bowery Street and they're kind of big kind of nice kind of new check them out who would have known that the meal that the railroad workers in Taipei were eating 70 years ago would still hold up to this day here I got some chilled doujang aka soy milk wow it's on the hao he what do you think about the tres leches cake good. is it delicious on a scale of 1 to 10 mm. Ah! All right, our next spot on Cheap Chinatown Eats is actually in Little Italy, but we're here at Cappy Cappy. And don't cap here. Cappy. No capping, no capping. This is the best tres leches because it is a Mexican chain from Mexico, guys. Uh, yo, get, tell us about it. We have ice cream here. We have the strawberry, passion fruit, okay. pistachio, cookies and coffee, vanilla, uh, chocolate and butter pecan. All right, so what about the tres leches? What is so good about the Mexican tres leches the at Cappy? It's down all the other Spanish styles. Uh, it's different because the male is uh, concentrating in the bread and the Dominican is the uh, male is in the bottle. Oh! Uh, so the Mexican style of tres leches cake, the milk goes into the cake. Yes. This is punch I'm trying Mexican tres leches in Chinatown and this might be the best tres leches I ever have in my life. This is the mixed fruit one. Oh my gosh, it's super juicy and moist. Whoa, that is the perfect blend. It tastes like one of those Cantonese fruit wedding cakes with the light cream and the fruit in the middle, except fused with the tres leches. That's a beautiful fusion here in Chinatown. Here I have the cappuccino one. Let's see if I feel the caffeine kick. $7 a slice. It's not the cheapest thing you can buy in Chinatown but share this between two people and you're good to go. Man, hey, you weren't capping. Yeah. This is the best. That's very good. Muy bien. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we got a stall from Mott Street Eatery by way of Taiwan. A lot of people consider these the best dumplings in New York City. Let's see if it's true. Hey. Tell us about Sammy Wago, man. Are these the best dumplings in New York City? Some people say yes. Yeah. Is. is it on the New York Times already? The last one, the most in the in expense restaurant uh, for the 2022. What is so good about this uh, Jiaozi machine? I've seen it before. So that's it. Yeah. You also got all the you have three in one cup. All right, you guys, so they got a few dishes that they do not have at the other Sammy Wago, which is only Guo Tiers. This is a Dong Kuai soup. This is, they said this is a traditional lamb bone soup. Very popular in mainland China. Over here is the New Rou Mian. And uh, yeah, this is supposed to be Taiwanese style, but if you know about Taiwanese style, even in Taiwan, they got a bunch of different 
versions of it. But I think the thing that typifies it is definitely this noodle thickness and the presence of the preserved green veggies. Upon trying this Nero, man, I gotta tell you, it is herbaceous AF, and that is very authentic. Listen, I'm telling you, this is for like Chinese people. <laughs> it's very herby, but it's very good. The shank is good, the broth is good, but yes, very herby. Honestly, you really feel the Xinyan Kwai Le vibes in here. This is a shrimp guo tie. This is a chicken guo tie. Chicken is more a little bit more modern. You know, a lot of people cannot eat pork. And of course, you got pork and shrimp. This is the number one. This is the signature here at Sammy Wago. This is actually a pidan tofu. Pidan is this century egg. This tofu is, you know, right here. All right, you guys, Sammy Wago was rated the number one dumpling spot in New York City. So we got to see because sometimes the media tells lies, but sometimes it tells the truth. Mm, good. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments section below what do you guys think of chicken meat inside of the Guatias. Traditionally, it's always been pork for centuries, but sometimes you gotta get, get, get on with the more modern proteins, guys. Yo, the chicken one? The chicken one is a five out of five. Listen, guys, all of these were eight bucks except the shrimp and the pork, which is 10 bucks. This is the one I'm about to try right now. Guys, I don't know if it's the absolute best, but it might be. Come to Sammy Wagos, check it out. They don't just have guatias and dumplings here, guys. They've got the uh, sweet potato cho or chuk or kanji, whatever you want to call it in whatever language. Of course, you got the peanuts with the sardines or anchovies with this cucumber with the nuro pian, which is just uh, like a beef shank. It's very like tendony. Oh, it's <laughs> a hard working Chinese man. Next up on our newest edition of Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got Tipsy Shanghai. they got other locations around Manhattan. This is probably one of the most authentic Shanghainese restaurants you can get in the whole city. We're going to get Shaolong Bao's, Shenzhen Bao's, and Spring Rolls. You guys, we are looking at Shenzhen Bao for $8, Shaolong Bao's for $7, and Spring Rolls for $7, man. I think, first of all, this is something a lot of people in New York City don't really know about, the Shenzhen Bao. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that's like a gigantic Shaolong Bao. You know, there's a lot of different styles of this Bao around China. Some people do the crispy skin that's like tough, and then some people do the uh, manto skin. Listen guys, there are a lot of good Shaolong Baos around the city. This happens to be the one that reminds me the most of the street side stalls in Shanghai. Oh my goodness, look at that drip. Next up, you've got the Chunjuan. This is $6 here. This spot is brand new to Chinatown. It's very authentic. They're playing the Shanghai, Jiangsu, Zhejiang region, Watertown music in the background. Check it out. Compare it versus the New York style. You still might like Joe's. You still might like 498 or whatever, but it's worth a shot. Guys, welcome to East Season. Basically, it's a brand new build out. Uh, it's owned by Cantonese now. It took over Food Station that was on Canal Street. Guys, Food Station is a super like hole in the wall. You probably didn't go there, but anyways, here's what they're serving now. They got a lot of nice roast meat, siu mei. Uh, this is a samping fan, AKA three treasure rice. Only $11, very hefty. Got veggies. I like the veggies here, man. It's not that chopped cabbage. It's the, it's the real uh, gai lan. And then you have your meats. Let's take a look at it. I like how it's uh, this darker reddish maroon color and not just the bright red uh, color seasoning, you know, that Chashu often has. Mmm. Just as I expected, that Chashu was delicious. Here I have the Siu'ap duck. Ah, looks a little bit trim, a little bit lean. What's she? Mmm, okay. Duck's not bad, not the best that I've had though. Let's try the fo yuk, aka the siu yuk. Ooh, okay. A lot of meat, a little bit of skin. Mmm. I'll tell you this, I think covering Chinatown and all the new spots that always popped up, I think there was a sense that people were getting that Cantonese food was going away. It's actually not. This is a fully Cantonese seafood restaurant. They have all the crab fried rices, everything that you want. So what I'm guessing is that it's just new people. I think a lot of people from maybe Guangzhou, 
or wherever they're coming here, they're opening up shops. Cantonese food is still very much around and there are new spots popping up and they are busy because guess what? Actually, the type of Chinese food that a lot of people in America first had is still Cantonese food. So, I mean, that's why there's, hence all the non-Asians here. The best highlight here was definitely the cha siu. It looks different than other spots. Let's take a look at it. Here, of course, we got our accoutrements, throwing in the little bit of basil, nice little plate. I like how the jalapenos are cut very thinly, you know, not too thick. I'm gonna put that in there. This oxtail pho was $15. As you can see, it comes with about one, two, three, four, five bones of oxtail. This is actually a pretty good deal. All right, I'm trying the $15 oxtail pho here at Pho Pasture over on Baxter Street. I didn't even know that they had oxtail pho to be honest because it's, it's not something that's well advertised, but let's take a look at it. They give you a lot of pieces, maybe like five bones for 15. All right, what is my honest review of the $15 oxtail pho here at Pho Pasture? The only oxtail pho in Chinatown. I would say it's definitely worth getting, but it's not gonna blow you away because the oxtail is not super, super tender. Um, it obviously doesn't match up with a lot of the other oxtail pho spots, but shout out to them for even serving this. To be honest, a lot of pho spots don't even go for it. Um, they don't even try to attempt, so I gotta give Pho Pasture credit for trying. So $15, you'll get a lot of oxtail though. All right, everybody, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we got one of my favorite pho spots in all of Chinatown, Nam Sun. Here, this is one of the biggest features here is that you can order brown rice noodles in your pho. They actually have a different taste, a different texture. They're kind of stretchy. I love them. I personally pay the extra 250 for them, so it does kind of boost the price of this pho. But honestly, Nam Sun, by the way, has the best meat. Okay, maybe I think the broth is one thing, but the meat is really good here. And then here I have the pho bo call, um, you know, the beef stew and with egg noodles right here. Take a look at this. Oh, and then I also got the roll. And this is really nice. Guys, the bread at these spots is delicious. Look how soft that is. Let me just dip that real quick for you. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of Vietnamese friends in New York or that visit New York and they always shade Chinatown pho because they think it doesn't taste fully authentic. But I will tell you this, guys, it's still really good. And when we're talking about prices, we're talking about Manhattan prices here, okay? It costs $700 a month to just park your car. So pho for $15, $16, even with the brown rice noodles, that's still a deal. Next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats, we got Tria Bakery. This is a spot that I've never been to. It's over here at the corner of the Confucius Plaza, Chanham Square. Let's check it out. All right, here at Tria Diner, we have the Tria Burger. This was about $10. It's on a brioche bun. You can pick how you want your patty done. It's got bacon, mozzarella, mushrooms, onions. Tria Diner. Could be a gem over at Champion Square. Do not sleep on Tria Diner. 